Hey, got a new tool here. Got this right off of Amazon, supposed to improve our traction for plowing snow. It takes 15 minutes to warm up, so we're gonna get that started, and I guess we're gonna see how it works. Hey, welcome back everybody. Today, we're gonna go over all the different ways that you can improve and gain traction for when you're plowing snow, pushing snow, snow blowing. You know, snowy, icy conditions can wreak havoc on trying to get your chores done in the cold, and it's already not the most fun in the world if you don't have a cab, so you wanna get it done as quick as you can. So if you wanna find out all the ways you can get yourself out of a slippy situation, make sure you stick around. Really quick, I'd appreciate it if you do enjoy the video. Give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe to see more tractor videos, and I sell tractor attachments. I ship them all over the country. So if you want something for your machine, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. All right, so we've talked about this before, but you need a lot of different forms of ballast weight in different positions on your tractor. You know, and, and folks ask me all the time, right? How much traction or how much weight do I need in order to push snow with a snow pusher or a plow or a snow blower? My answer is kind of generic, right? I always just say as much as you can possibly put on your tractor, that weight is going to be a benefit to you. Tractors in general, especially modern day tractors, are relatively light given their size. So in order to be able to push snow and move big piles of wet, heavy snow around, you have to put all that power that's in the engine right down to the ground through your contact points, which are gonna be your tires, primarily the rear drive tires, but if you're in four wheel drive as well, you're gonna have that front wheel drive assist. Now, smaller tractors, especially like a 1025R, are gonna need ballast weight in multiple positions. One point of ballast weight, say just a three point hitch, isn't really sufficient in my mind because the three point hitch doesn't lift up all that much weight, maybe around six, 700 pounds, and so, you're missing out on a few hundred pounds of weight that you can put up here on the rear axle, besides <clears throat> the operator, of course. So I know what you're thinking. This is starting to add up to a lot of unnecessary costs. You know, you're not buying a tool, right? You're just getting some weight to put on your tractor to help push some snow along. However, I can help you justify it a little bit more. We mentioned it in the hidden cost of tractor ownership and that ballast weight here. Well, think about a front end loader on your tractor, right? You have a big ballast weight up there when you're picking up a load of dirt or if you have pallet forks or a grapple with a log and so you have to have an equal amount of weight or more hopefully on the back side to firmly plant you to the ground so this weight serves more than one purpose for pushing snow it's about efficiency and not spinning your wheels but when you're using a front end loader it's all about safety all right so i jotted down made up a little list here of all the different ways that you can improve traction on your tractor when you're pushing snow. And I'm gonna give these to you in the same order that they popped into my head, all right? I, I couldn't really think of a good logical manner or fashion to give these to you, so a little bit all over the board, let's just run with it. Okay, so the first one up is actually the tool we showed you in the beginning, it's a tire groover slash cyper, at least according to some folks that I saw online that are using this. I've uh, been used with success by a lot of folks, but it's a tire groover, you plug it in, you heat it up, you're gonna essentially melt melt slash cut a groove or a strip of rubber out of the treads on your tires, on your tires, on your tires. So I've never done that before, and we're gonna give that a shot today to see how it goes. I watched some videos on it being done, but worst case scenario, I'm out of tire, but I'm the one that's making the, uh, the little bit of a calculated risk here. Okay, now sticking on the theme of tires, you could get a set of snow tires or a different tread pattern. So I did a whole comparison of the different tread patterns of tires that are out there for the 1025R. The R4s, which are on this tractor, are the most popular by far, but they are dead last as far as what I would select to use in the snow. And so since I'm cheaping out a little bit, I have another 1025R. I don't feel like paying to put the Versaturfs, which are the, the number one tire I would get, but you could get HDAP tires, which are another very popular tread pattern uh, for icy and snow conditions. There's Nokian snow tires that are out there, um, tires that are specifically for the snow. So that's a more expensive option, and sometimes it may require you to get a different set of wheels, not just tires, and that can get really costly. Okay, kind of sticking with the whole wheels and tires thing, you can get chains, all right? Now, if you are on gravel, traditional steel chains are going to work great for you. If you are on a paved surface, asphalt, or concrete, then you want to look into something that, like the rubber tire chains that are out there. Is it Terra, Terra King, Terra Track, something like that? Terra something. I'll put a link down below to where you can get those, but they are going to be a rubber option, so they're not going to damage and, and scuff up and rip up and chip and everything else on your paved surfaces. Another option to consider that I have never used, I plan to at some point in the future, are going to be tire studs. Now, I have been talking off and on over the last couple of years with a manufacturer that makes these tire studs, and what they've told me is that you want to start out putting the studs in your front tires. So you don't put those studs in every single tread that you have. You're going to maybe do in every other or every third tread. Uh, you start light and then work your way up as you need to. Worst case scenario, you can also put them in your rear tires too, but when you're in four wheel drive or you have the front assist turned on, that's really gonna help with the traction. Again, not suitable 
in my opinion, for asphalt or concrete, but if you are on gravel or some other off surface, off paved type material, you're gonna be okay. Oh, and a side note too, uh, he also mentioned that these aren't good just for snow, but a lot of you guys that are down south with dealing with a lot of clay, they found that this is very beneficial in getting additional traction and that type of material. Okay, now we're gonna briefly hit on a bunch of different types of weight that you can get and you should have on your tractor to get that traction that you need to put the power to the ground. And so that list is going to include wheel weights. It's gonna include liquid ballast inside your tires. Now liquid ballast comes in many forms. I would encourage you not to get water. Down south they'll use water because it's not gonna freeze, but if you're in a cold climate when you're pushing snow, you wanna have something like RimGuard, beet juice, washer fluid. Uh, a TL90 is what we use here locally at, uh, at Meekoff Tire Matawan, but one of those liquids that's not going to freeze up and corrode over time is gonna be what you want. So if you're thinking about adding on an aftermarket cab to get out of the cold in the winter time, a really good additional benefit besides keeping you out of the snow and the blowing wind could be the additional ballast weight. Most of that is gonna sit over your rear axle and really help get more weight right over that axle to get to those tires and keep the traction going. And if you were ever looking for an excuse not to go on a diet, you want to keep your weight up for the winter time, just think about all the additional ballast weight that you could have right there. I mean, Chris actually brought that up. I think he must be, he must be looking for excuses. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. But nobody wants to diet around Christmas, so keep that weight up and chalk it up to ballast weight. Okay, let's talk about the most obvious form of weight, which is going to be suitcase weights or a ballast box, something like that. And you're going to see a bunch of suitcase weights right here, uh, five 70 pound weights mounted directly on the front rail of a 1025R, but you can put these on the three point hitch. You can get a ballast box. If you have a certain attachment that's pretty hefty and, and not easily damaged, you can hang it off the three point hitch, but you have a lot of options there. So front ballast weight can be just as important as rear ballast weight. This is how you're gonna turn and steer, right? So if you don't have enough weight up front to be able to move around and steer around, that's gonna be problematic. So having this weight up here is key in slippery conditions. So on that note, I wanna tell you about the Versa Bracket and the weight bundle that we have for sale. It's a weight bracket that's designed to hang eight suitcase weights on, so you can put it on the back end. This is a Spico Quick Hitch, so you don't have to use it with a Spico Quick Hitch. You can if you want to, with or without. It'll direct fit right to a Category 1 three-point hitch, but you hang eight suitcase weights on there. Besides being just a weight bracket, you're going to have two built-in chain hooks or grab hooks on there, a built-in two-inch receiver so you can use it to tow equipment around your yard, and you're also going to have a chainsaw holder welded on top to try to make this as multi-purpose as possible, hence the name Versa Bracket. So you can buy this right on our website. The prices are going to include shipping right to your house. You can buy this with the Versa Bracket in eight weights, 41 or 70 pounds. And if you want to, you can also add on a set of wheel weights. You can add on more weights for the front of your tractor as well. We show it on the 1025R even with the front end loader installed. Now to clarify, you cannot fit the 70 pound weights with the front end loader on, but you can fit five 41 pound weights on that front rail even with your loader installed. Now I wanna point out, so on our website, if you see anything that's marked ship's freight, all right, so that means we're gonna put it on a pallet and ship it out to you at LTL. You gotta use a set of pallet forks. You can get a lift gate if you want to to take it off at your house. But any item, so whether that's a set of pallet forks, a box blade, a snow pusher, a rototiller, a grapple, all those kinds of items, the Versa bracket and bundle, right? Any of those items that ship freight, you can add on additional weights for no extra shipping cost. So for example, say you wanna buy the Versa Bracket Bundle, you get the weight bracket and eight weights. If you wanna add on five more 41 pound weights for the front end of your 1025R, you can add those onto this bundle for no extra shipping cost. If you wanna add wheel weights for your 1025R or your 2038R or your 3039 or your 4066, you get the idea. You can do all that with no extra freight cost involved. Oh, one more note though. You're gonna see I am using the 70 pound weights up here, but that's without a front end loader. If you are gonna have a front end loader on your 1025R, you gotta use the 41 pound weights. The 70s are gonna interfere with the torque tube. And on that note, we also offer black 70 pound wheel weights for you Kubota BX owners. So 26 by 12 by 12 uh, wheels and tires are gonna fit just fine with the 70 pound weights. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. Again, I've never done it before. Uh, you can set the depth, all right? You just loosen the nut and, and put the blade uh, further in or, or pull it further out. So I measured these treads and they're about five eighths of an inch deep. And we're gonna go about a quarter inch deep. I, uh, somewhere online. I don't know if it was in a comment that uh, was in a previous video or something I read. I, there's a lot of information out there about how to groove tires or side tires. And uh, it said about a quarter inch is the minimum you want to go. So that's what we have it set at about a heavy quarter, a heavy quarter. We're going to uh, do a long strip groove in here on each one of these and 
we're gonna see how it goes. So I was thinking I was going to sipe the tires, but there's actually grooving and siping, two completely different things. And so we're gonna groove by carving out a piece of rubber all the way through here. Siping are, are kind of like almost, almost look like scratch marks. You can go uh, uh, multiple different directions on here and have a lot of tiny little grooves, but I don't know. For some reason, this seemed to be the way to go. We're gonna give it a shot. All right, so this has been warming up for a solid half hour now, and uh, it's ready to get to work. Oh, you're gonna push it, not pull it? Nice. That's pretty cool. Mm. That one was not so good. <laughs> And getting the hang of it. Hold on. Okay, so here's what you're removing right here, which doesn't look like it's as deep as what I have it set, but that's okay. It's putting a good groove in there. I'm uh, <laughs> not perfect on my cuts yet, but not too bad overall. Putting a decent amount of force on here. You're supposed to push down with this leading edge of the, uh, um, of the bracket here to help kind of preheat the rubber that you're gonna cut out uh, because then this is doing the main cutting, of course, down below on the blade, but it's a bit of an effort, not terrible. It's looking pretty good so far.
we just got one tire done. Um, I'm gonna have to take off. I got my day job to do. I gotta go answer uh, emails, take phone calls, get orders processed, help ship stuff out. So got a lot of work to do. So this is it for now. I'm gonna have to tackle the other tire uh, this evening after the kids go to bed. So I didn't think to time it until towards the end. So I had about three quarters, 80% of the tire uh, of practice, but we timed the last eight treads that we did and it took about six and a half minutes to do so uh, less than a minute per tread once you get into a groove however i would say count on taking some breaks at least if you're out of shape like i am um, you're you're going slow but you still have to put a decent amount of effort into it and and it just wears out you know your hand your your arm your shoulder a little bit there so uh, count on a few breaks i don't know i would say if you planned on a couple hours you could probably knock this out uh, for a small set of tires or rear tires like this if you're gonna do the fronts which we'll probably see how it goes. Maybe we'll add on the fronts um, after, we, after we try this out in the winter. Obviously, easy enough to do later on, and they're smaller tires, so they won't take as long. A few tips, make sure you have some decent ventilation. We have some breeze blowing in here now, but it was getting a little stinky there in the beginning. Um, count on a little bit of extra depth when you're setting your cutting edge. It doesn't look like it was going quite as deep as what I wanted it to go. However, it was close enough, it was already warmed up. I didn't want to go too deep. You know, you don't, you'd rather not go too deep and uh, through the actual tread itself. So we're in no danger of that at all. I think it visually looks like it's gonna have more traction. I would encourage you to probably, unless you're better at uh, visualizing the stuff than I am, probably trace on here ahead of time, take the extra 10, 15 minutes, mark it with a, um, a marker or something of some kind just to have your line there. As far as having the tires on or off, I don't know if it would speed anything along. You know, you have extra time there taking the tires off, putting them back on but it could make it more comfortable. I wouldn't say this is the most uncomfortable job in the world, but it's not the most comfortable either. So anyway, we'll get that other tire done. We gotta wait till we have some decent snow here. We're gonna hook up the snowblower on the back, get the snow pusher on the front. We're gonna have to see how it does. We'll give you a take on it. I've used these tires. I've been stuck with the 1025R on the side of my driveway and had to use my truck to pull it out with these tires on there before. So they are, they're just no good in snow. Um, so I'm really hoping, this isn't gonna hurt. This is only gonna help. Look online, you'll see a lot of folks that have a lot of, of encouraging things to say about grooving your tires. We'll post a link below on where you can get this tire groover, which I guess you can flip that blade over and actually use it as a siper as well, putting more of those kind of scratch marks on there if you want to. Uh, but again, that's made in the USA, actually looks like right here in Michigan, which is pretty cool. That seems to be the one that everybody uses online. So again, link down below in the description. We'll also put a link there on our website that'll take you to Amazon where you can buy it. Anyway, I hope you found this enjoyable, something kind of new and unique and different for the channel. I had a lot of fun showing you. If you did enjoy the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit subscribe to see more tractor videos. And if you want an attachment for your tractor, again, we ship all over the country. Make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.